Hi, welcome along to another um, presentation about um, astrophysics. I'm going to attempt a slightly more complicated format today, kind of using a different number of different inputs. Um, this is obviously the classification of stars. We've done brightness of stars. I've got a picture of some stars here just to um, uh, just to allow us to uh, get started. Um, hopefully, you can see. You know, here we've got stars that are varying in colour and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So they're varying in brightness away and this is the famous um, Orion's belt. So moving along, um, what I've got here is a picture of some spectra uh, from different stars. Obviously they've been arranged in a particular pattern but I think broadly we can see that there are two main features to each of these spectra. So this is just um, the light from the star that's being passed through a diffraction grating. You can see, I would say here on um, this particular star, that that's the brightest part of the spectrum. And you can see that the brightest part of the spectrum starts with the stars at the top of the diagram towards the left. Um, and then it proceeds further right. And then I think on this bottom one, it's actually beyond the right hand edge. Uh, of the spectra. Now we know that the peak wavelength is related to the temperature um, of the star and you can see up here um, we've got um, high temperature, these are high temperature stars here because that's a, because they've got a very short peak wavelength and then relatively speaking these are cooler stars because um, they've got a, a longer peak wavelength thinking about the black body radiation stuff. So no great surprise there if I um, reveal the temperatures of these stars. You can see we, uh, these are the surface temperature ranging from about 50,000 to 3,500. And we're going to need to look and think about those um, temperatures later on. The other feature that we can see very clearly, if I um, change colour of pen, this might help, that these are not continuous spectrums, are they? You can see here that we've got these black absorption lines punctuating um, the spectra. Now, those black absorption lines are um, a crucial identifier. And although it is possible for an astronomer to identify where the max, where the peak wavelength is, it's actually by far easier to look for these characteristic lines. So I'm going to change now to pen, pen and paper to show you how those characteristic lines are formed. Actually, there's one more thing to go. Can we see here, um, we've got the a letter representing each one, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. And you're going to need to remember those in order, but we'll come back to that in a moment, okay? Just going to have a look now at how, um, we go about forming um, a line spectra. Try not to jig the uh, camera too much. So let's have a reminder about what we learned last year. We talked about um, an electron potentially being in the ground state, the n equals one. Um, it receiving f some energy from somewhere, possibly from another electron or from um, a absorbing a photon and it gets it moves up into an excited state. Um, it can't be stable in that excited state so it will de-excite to a lower energy level and as a result it will emit a photon uh, and the energy of that photon depends on the size of the gap uh, between the two energy levels so we can for that medium size gap can imagine a green photon if our electron had ended up in this energy level and made this smaller transition we can imagine a longer wavelength short frequency photon here um, so maybe a red one but for a large transition a larger transition we might expect the blue photon and obviously we can move into the ultraviolet and the um we can move into the ultraviolet part of the spectrum and we can move into the infrared part of the spectrum for larger and smaller gaps. Now that's not what we did, the process we're dealing with in stars. The lines in stars 
are what's called um, an absorption spectra. So let's have a look at how that, let's have a talk about how that works. So if a photon comes along and it's got exactly the same energy, let's use the same colour pen, as that photon there, it could be absorbed by that electron and it could move it into that energy level and then those photons are gone. So that's the key idea that we've absorbed photons with a specific energy from the spectra and that's what's left as a dark line. Let's have a look at the geometry of how that would work in reality and then a specific problem relating to hydrogen. So here's us viewing our spectra from Earth. Here's the hot inner part of a star. And then these outer layers are where the absorption lines are formed. It's so hot down here that there are no electrons in energy levels. They're just a, a, a great big soup with the nuclei floating in it. This is um, producing um, black body radiation continuous spectrum. So we imagine our photon um, traveling out like that until it encounters an atom or possibly an iron in the atmosphere of the star. It's then absorbed if it's got the right energy um, causing an excitation in that atom. Now you might reasonably ask me the question well, surely if that photon is then re-emitted because the electron returns to the ground state, why is, that fo why is that photon missing? Well, the answer is that we're interested in the photons travelling towards us, which is a very specific direction. And the chances are if that photon's re-emitted, it will travel in a direction that will mean that it won't be observed by the eye. So, what's the specific problem um, in relation to hydrogen. Well hydrogen has a huge gap between the n equals 1 level and n equals 2 and then some more reasonably spaced um, lines above that. Obviously most electrons, I'm just going to check that I'm still in view, Most electrons, most of the time, are in the ground state. This gap is so big that only an ultraviolet photon um, could cause an excitation from an electron in the ground state. And obviously that would mean that ordinarily we would expect hydrogen to produce no f visible lines, either by emission, uh, certainly not by absorption. Any emission lines would only come from transitions down to this level here. So this is n equals 1. This is n equals 2. However, in the very hottest stars, there's so much thermal energy by the collision of electrons, so collision of atoms exciting the electrons, that you actually get significant number of electrons across the star excited into the n equals 2 state. These can now then absorb visible light photons causing these smaller excitations. Sorry, that's this photon symbol. And that means that we get visible hydrogen lines in the hottest stars because it's hot enough to have significant electrons in the n equals 2 level. We're going to put that together back now in the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, welcome along to the last part of this. Um, well, there won't be any exams here. I'm going to memorise all this. We should just go through the principles and then you can try some questions. So this is what we saw before. It's a set of kind of ran relatively random looking letters that describe these spectral, cl spectral classes. Um, most important thing for dealing with questions is you know that these are in temperature order. So this is, if you look here, we've got the hottest here down to the coolest. Now, it looks like there's a lot of temperatures there. Of course, actually every other temperature is repeated. So it's just these ones underlined in red that are important but we most important we know that O is our hottest and M is our coolest this is a simplified version for A level um, and you need to have a way of remembering them so it can be O B A fine guy 
kiss me um, or if you prefer your pen just gone mad oh be a fine girl kiss me there must be much better acronyms than that colors kind of make sense just transitioning like they in that first picture we saw from blue all the way to red blue being the hottest and then you can see here it's the hottest stars which have visible hydrogen lines strongest in a but visible in o and b that's because these stars are hot enough to use thermal excitation to get a, su a sufficient number of electrons into the n equals two state then we have ionized metal so a metal in this case is anything heavier than helium um, and the um, heat in the stars here has caused some ionization that changes the spectrum here we're seeing other atoms that are neutral so it's a lower temperature they've not lost any electrons we're seeing the absorbed lines and at the very lowest temperature we see titanium oxide ions and that's got to be low enough temperature for a bond to exist right um that's probably all you need to go to understand this and get going on some questions <laughs>